That's fine. Um, it's, let me see how many questions there is. One, two, five, six, seven, eight. Did you send me something or did I already have it or? I think you already had it. It's the last page of that review packet we've been doing. Okay. Hold on. Let me, uh, cool. uh, I still have that. Let me find it. Sure. No problem. And then we can start on uh, 13C when, when we start. Right, let's see. Cool. i got to go back a ways to find that. Oh, you're fine. Your mom sent it, right? Oh. Let me search for her. That'll be the fastest way. Cool. Hmm. That is? Did you get, I don't, I don't know if I sent the last page, honestly. Let me. I thought that you had sent me an email that had numerous pages. But I thought. I can send it again. This is April 18th. Uh, do you recognize either of these? In other words, is this it? Uh, that's not. We did that last we night. We did this one. That's right. Yeah. And let's see, I had one other. Let me just take a quick look. Was it this one? Uh -huh. I don't think we got to this one. We did. Yeah, we did that one. We did this one? Oh, yeah, you're right. I remember the word problems. Yeah. When you sp How do you spell your last name? C-O-W-E-N, right? C-O-W-A-N. A-N. Okay, there we go. David Cowan, 1949. Ah, uh, bet what happened is you put it in as C-O-W-E in one time. I think so, yeah. I might have been that, yeah. Delete, I just sent it. You should yeah. delete that so that it, yeah. never, it never comes up again. Yeah, I, del I deleted it, yeah. Anything yet? There it is. There we go, cool. You wanted to start at 13. Actually, let's see 13B. I thought I finished that one, but nope. All right. Okay. Cool. Factor completely. Good. I love factoring problems because, as I tell everybody, you can never get too much factoring practice. Yeah. Exactly. What's the first step I should do? Uh-oh. What just happened? Ah, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> like, exit out of the page. I thought I lost you for a sec. Okay. So, we would put 2 on the outside for B, and then uh, X in both parentheses. Well, before we do that, uh -huh. notice that factoring quadratics is easy as long as the coefficient is 1. Right. It only becomes difficult when the coefficient is something other than 1. Yeah. So can we do anything before we try to factor the quadratic? Uh -huh. Their greatest common factor that we can take out. You always want to do that because it reduces the total size of the thing. Yeah. What can um, we take out? We can do... Uh, 12 does go into 70. Always start with the smallest number. Okay, 2 does. Well, right. In other words, no number greater than 2 is going to divide into 2. Right. So you cannot have a greatest common factor greater than 2. No. Left. Okay. Okay, and then it would be x uh, minus and then x Hold plus. Hold on. Let's just first of all lay out the quadratic. No, oh, let's factor squared. 2 out first. What's left? Okay. Uh, so just x squared uh, minus, uh, which one? 12 yeah. minus. Cool. And then the other parenthesis. Oh, yeah. So just one parenthesis then. What's the um, term? 
plus 35. 35, right. Cool. Now we can worry about factoring that quadratic. And notice that that's a much simpler quadratic to factor. For sure. Because the coefficient of the x term is 1. Uh -huh. So these are really easy to do. You certainly don't need a California method or anything like that to do these kind of quadratics. Yeah. Because there's really three steps to do and only three steps to do. What's the next step? Uh, X and then... Don't tell uh, me so the factors. Tell me the second step. Uh, so the second step would be X so that minus and then X plus. There's no way a minus and a plus can produce plus 35. So it would be both plus then, or both minus. Exactly. Either both plus or both minus. That's what we know. Yeah. How do we answer which? Uh, we would do both both minus because they both middle equal term. minus 12. The middle term yeah. is negative, and this is a plus, then they have to both be minus. Uh -huh. So that's step two. Now, step three is what? Uh, to find a number that adds up to 12 but multiplies to 35. Let's, let's word it properly. Negative 12. Factors okay. of 35. That add up to 12. That means Negative two numbers 12. that multiply to 35 uh -huh. that have to add to 12. Not negative 12, but 12. Uh-huh. Well, what are factors of 35 that add to 12? Uh, 7 and 5. There's your answer. Cool. And that's the complete answer. Yeah. Let's look at C. Cool. Now, C is what I call a second degree quadratic. Because it's much harder to factor. Why? Right. Because there's multiple factors. In other words, I can't just turn it into X and X. No. So where am I going to start? Um, find a number that the greatest common factor is 6. There is none. There's In other no, words, yeah. there's no greatest common factor that divides into 6, 19, and 7. And one reason you know that is because 19 is prime and 7 is prime. No number is going into No that. way. It, it's impossible to find a number that's going to go into either of those. Right. So the first step becomes dividing that up. How do we split that up? Um, 3 and 2. It's a good start. Always yeah. go with the – it doesn't have to be 3 and 2. It could be 6 and 1. Uh-huh. But we're going to start with 3 and 2. Right. Second step. Uh, so the next step would be... I'm not sure. I, I'm just confused. I'm like how... Signs. If, write these steps down if you don't have them memorized. Okay. Because you really need to know how to factor quadratics. Yeah, okay? for sure. It's not really that hard. You just have to know the method. Yeah. Well, the first step is to break up the x squared. Uh -huh. Always an x squared because it's a quadratic. Right. The second step is to determine both signs. Okay. What do both signs have to be? Um, how, how is it possible to produce a minus 7? Uh, a plus and a minus. Exactly. Yeah. Only in this case, I can't write just plus minus saying that it's the same as minus plus because it is. It's not. No. So I have to do a plus minus there, and I have to allow for the fact that it could be minus plus. Right. It's only because the coefficient of the x term is different. If it was uh -huh. the same, then I could just write minus plus. Right. Okay. Now. You got to throw out all the rules you've learned. You cannot say factors of seven that subtract to nineteen. That doesn't work like that anymore. In other words, the moment you get anything other than ones here, 
Uh -huh. Then it's a trial and error. Well, how many factors of seven are there? Just one, seven and one. So there, we don't have a lot to experiment with. And it's trial and error. So without thinking at all, I'm going to put a seven and a one right there. Right. And then I'm going to see if that produces the correct middle term. Does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see here. So three t three x. What's the inside? So negative. Oh, fourteen uh, x. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive fourteen x. What's the outside? Um, negative three x. Add those two together, we get 11x. Which isn't what we know. It's not the middle term, and more importantly, it's not the correct number. Exactly. If it was a positive 19, then I would have my answer. I would just have to move the 7 down and the 1 down. Right. But it's not. So, I have to change. I'm going to put the 1 there and the 7 over there. Uh-huh. Let's see if that works. What does that produce as a middle term? Negative 21x and then a uh, 2x. Plus or minus. Always put the sign on it. If you don't put the Plus. sign on it, you can't be certain what it is. Yeah. I know that, you know, they've taught you that if you don't put a sign on there, it's plus. But in this uh -huh. situation, put a sign on it. Now, uh -huh. add those two together. And you get negative 19 got our answer. Perfect. That's the nature of the beast. It's trial and error. Now yeah. I can erase that in minus and that plus, and there's my answer right there. Uh -huh. And I know it's correct. I don't need to go back and check this term because I started by splitting that up. I know it's correct. I don't right. need to check that term. I took factors of seven. Yeah. The only term you always need to check is that middle term. Uh huh. And you do it with the double smiley face. Yeah. Let's see. That was C, correct? Yeah. That, yeah. All right. Let's look at another hard one. Cool. 5x cubed. This is not a quadratic. This is a cubic. Uh-huh. First step. Okay, so our first step would be well, no numbers go into five. Correct. So well, it would be five, five does, but five doesn't yeah, go into eighteen, point. and five doesn't go into eight. So there's no greatest number common factor. There is a greatest common factor. What is it? Um, let me think here. Well, here's the here's the trick, Dylan. You don't know how to factor cubics. Uh -uh. I don't either. Forty. Uh, Forty does. Uh, hold on. We're not going to be able to factor a cubic unless we okay. turn it into a quadratic. Well, how can we turn okay. this into a quadratic? Um. What can I factor out of there that leaves a quadratic? That leaves a quadratic. Um, X. Just X, yeah. What's left? Uh, so we would have X and then 5X squared. Okay. Um, minus, how do we, minus, let's think. Here. Well, you have to divide that term by X. Whatever you're factoring out, divides into each of these terms evenly. That's why yeah. we were able to factor it out. If it didn't, we wouldn't be able to factor it out. So what, right. is, what is 18x squared divided by x? Uh, just 18x. That's all you have to do. Okay. And check, make sure that x times that is equal to that. Okay, all that makes sense. That step. And then what's the last term? Uh, minus 8. Correct. Cool. Minus 8 times x is minus 8x. So we haven't uh -huh. changed anything. We've just factored out an x. But yeah. notice now we have a quadratic left. 
Well, uh -huh. we know how to factor quadratics. We were, and we've never been taught how to factor cubics. Yeah. But we know how to factor quadratics. So let's use our process on this. How do I do it? Uh, so we have to find number that. No, uh, not yet. Do it in steps. Do step one, okay. step two, step three. Okay. Uh, so number that goes into negative 18. No, hold on. Adds up step one is to split up the x squared terms. That's so all. So it would just one. be. Never change. Yeah. Okay. So what, so what two things have to go here? that multiply together to give you 5x squared? Uh, 5 and then 5x. Well, hold on. Does that multiply together to give 5x squared? Or no, 5 and then 5x. Well, that, that, that would work. multiply together to give 25x. Yeah, so just x and that one. 5x uh, and then... Uh, yes, you got it. Yeah. 5x and x. Yeah. In other words, you always want to split up the x's and then you put the numbers in front of them that are needed. Because right. they know yeah. that at some point when I foil these two things back together again, I get 5x squared. And that's uh -huh. what's important. You have to always multiply this by this to get this. Right. You've done a mistake if it doesn't. Okay? Okay. Second step. Uh, so the second step would be... Uh, six, let's take care. Second step is always the same. It never changes. Everybody uh -huh. wants to forget it, though. Nobody wants to do it. I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> I really don't. I, maybe because they teach you the California method, and they, it's not quite the same as my method. I think it's honestly harder than, like, it's harder than what you need to do. It's not like that hard. Like the second this. step is always determining both signs. Write that okay. down if you need to. Uh huh. That's the second step. Okay. What do both signs have to be? Both signs have to be. Well, they both have to be plus and a negative because. Correct. It's... They have to be opposite. That's what you want to say is they have to be opposite. Mm -hmm. But, again, that's a 5, that's a 1, so I have to allow for plus minus, and I have to allow for minus plus. Right. Now, what's the third step? Uh, so now the third step is to find a number that multiplies a negative 18. That, hold on. Oh, yeah. No. So, the third step is factors of 8. That's it. Factors of 8. Factors of 8. Can't say anything else about it. In other okay. words, because this is a 5x times an x, I can't say factors of 8 that subtract to the number 18. I can't say factors of 8 that add to 18. None of those yeah. are true any longer. I have okay. to examine all factors of 8. Uh -huh. And I have to do it on a trial and error basis. Well, okay. I've listed all the factors of 8. Which ones am I going to start with? Uh, probably, well... Trial and error. You can start with any one. Yeah. Let's try with 8 and 1. No, always try the two that are closest together for start. Okay. Yeah, 4 and 2 then, yeah. Right. And you can try them in any order. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, we're going to find out whether it's right or not. If it's not right, we're going to try the other ones. Right. It might be 8 and 1, but uh -huh. not likely. No. What middle term does this produce? Uh, 4x. Plus, plus 4x. 4x. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, those equal negative 10x. That does not even come close to our numbers. Nope. So let's try to Importantly, it's two. not an 18. No. So what's the next thing to try? Uh, 2 and 4. Correct. Not the, in other words, it, it wouldn't do any good to move the 4 down to here and the 2 down to there. Because no. all that's going to do is produce a plus 6x. And that's an important yeah. thing to realize because that eliminates one of our possibilities, which is good. This is a trial exactly. and error process. We want to eliminate stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What middle term does that produce? 
Uh, so that produces plus 2x, and then the outside would be negative 20x. Is that it? And you get negative 18, yeah. That's it. Cool. Now, let's say that the second one I happened to try was the 2 down there and the 4 over there. Uh -huh. Well, now notice that's going to, it, it's not the right answer, but it's going to uh -huh. give us the information we need to get the right answer. Because that's yeah. going to be minus 2x plus 20x. It's going to be plus 18x, which is uh -huh. right number, wrong sign. And is all I have to do to correct that is to move the 2 to the plus and the 4 to the minus. Exactly. And I know that that will produce a negative 18x. Yeah. That's important to, to do because it turns the trial and error process into four different tries down to two. Uh-huh. So it shortens it. Right. And notice that we now have three linear factors. That's linear. Uh -huh. That's linear. That's linear. Uh -huh. Three linear factors multiplied together give you a cubic. Yeah. All right. Cool. But we don't know how to do cubics otherwise. No. In other words, had I stuck a number on this plus seven, I can't do that problem. You there's can't, there's no. no greatest common factor, so I cannot take out an X. I cannot redo uh -huh. to a quadratic. So the only way they're going to give you a cubic is if you can take out an x. Yeah. So always know that. The moment you see a cubic in your class, know that the first step is going to be to take out an x. Okay. This is something special. This has its own name. What's this called? Uh, this is a problem of... Uh, you want to recognize oh my gosh. this. You're going to get it so frequently. I, I, rec I recognize it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Different it's difference of? Difference of perfect squares. Perfect. How's that fact? Uh, so it would be x uh, minus 7 and x plus 7. You got it. Always try to recognize that because it makes right. it so easy to factor. For sure. The only one you have to remember is that one. You always know the other one is the conjugate. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We got seven minutes here. Cool. Let's tackle this one right there. This is a extra hard one. Oh, cool. Wow. This is a tough one, yeah. It is. Um, here's what I know. That the only way I can produce that term uh -huh. is if I have something like that. Yeah. Could be 4x and x, but I'm always going to start out with 2x times 2x. Right. Remember, these two left terms multiplied together give you the first term of the result. Uh -huh. So I can split that up just like I normally would. Uh -huh. Now, the rest of it. The rest of it's going to have Y's in it. Yeah. Right. Well, let's experiment. And, and we've also got... Um, we got a minus 7y, so we're probably going to need plus minus. Uh -huh. And let's just experiment. It's going to have to be 7y and y. Yeah. And let's see what we get when we do that. Well, we certainly get that term. Uh-huh. We get the inside is 14xy. Outside yeah. is minus 2xy. Yeah, that's plus 12xy. Uh -huh. We're not looking at that term. Plus, we're not looking at a y squared. So, yeah. i got to take that off there. Uh -huh. With a 1. Because 
the way to do these is to make sure you get the first term and the last term. Right. This would give us the proper first term and the proper last term. Yeah. But it doesn't give us, ah, notice that if I play around with this a little bit and put a 7 there and a 1y there, now that produces the first and last term. Yeah. But it produces a minus 14x, which is close. We got plus 14x. So, so change that switch the uh, signs, yeah. Let's change that to minus. Uh -huh. Now what do we got? Now we got, we got the last term proper. We got the first term proper. And we get a 14x. Yeah. And so we that's get it. a minus 2x. In other words, yeah. here's what we get. Minus 2xy plus 14x. Add those two together. You can't really add them together, so you have to list them like this. Uh -huh. And that is our two middle terms right there. Cool. Exactly. Is minus 2xy plus 14x. So we got it right, and it was definitely trial and error, a lot of trial and error, but not yeah, that definitely. hard. In other words, I don't think that was as hard as the California method. To me, no. the California method is the most complicated, confusing, unfortunate. Method. Some people get taught it and they learn it. And then when they encounter me, they have problems because I don't really like it. I don't use it. Yeah. Me neither, uh, yeah. But there's no need to. In other words, even a really, really difficult one like this, I can do by exactly. trial and error. Uh-huh. Okay. And real quick, we got three minutes. Let's try this other hard one over here. Awesome. This one you you try. Okay. Uh, so we would put X in both parentheses. Okay, we to split start up the out. Axes. Yeah. Make sure we can produce that term right there. Yep. X so times X is X squared. There's still a second step determining both signs. What both signs have to be? Uh, both signs that have to be plus and a negative. Opposite. Just say opposite. Yeah. Okay. okay. And because okay. that's a 1X and that's a 1X, then I can get by with just that. I don't have to do the plus, minus, minus, plus. Okay. Because they're the same. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. let's start from back here. How do I produce a 5y? It's not that hard. Just 1 in 5. Right. Yeah. Not 1 in 5. 1 in 5 would produce five. a minus 5. But right. 5 and y would produce a minus 5y. Right. So, this combination produces that properly and produces this properly. Uh -huh. Now let's see if it produces these two middle terms. Okay. Well, so for the we got, we got yeah, so we got five x plus five x, and then uh, negative x y. God, that's close. Yes. Close. Uh. So let's switch the things. Yeah. Let's Put the go. y there and the five over here. Yeah. Now we get a plus xy and a minus 5x, uh -huh. and that's close. What's going on here? Gosh. Uh, what's going on is I wrote the problem wrong. Did you? Yeah, I did. It's plus 5x. Oh, that's what we did. Okay. Okay. And which means we had it right the first time. Right. In other words, we were only off on the sign on one of the cases, so it has to be uh -huh. what we originally wrote, 5 yep. and y. That produces the proper first term and the fourth term, and the middle two terms are plus 5x uh -huh. minus xy, and that's what we're looking at.
Perfect. Those two terms. They just can't be combined. But the fact that they can't be combined doesn't really affect anything. We're still going to do the process exactly the same way. Exactly. The, the secret is make sure that term is correct and that term is correct and then just play around with the combinations. Right. All right. Cool. Those are pretty good, actually. That's You're the first person I've encountered those kind of problems with. Wow. So um, I'm glad we ran into that. It me taught, too. It taught me something. Actually. Yeah, and awesome. That, uh, what it taught me is that what you need to focus on is making sure the first term is correct and the last term is correct. Exactly. Just fiddle with your numbers until you get the two middle terms correct. Yeah. All right. Dylan, right. it's a half an hour. I'll let you go. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like you have a bit of a cold there. I hope it. Uh, oh, away. Yeah, I just, I this is actually baseball yeah. games. Yeah, we you had well, varsity varsity play tonight. Yeah, when do you play next? And, uh, we play Saturday, nine and eleven. Why well, you supposed to have good, good weather? It's supposed to be really good weather for the next few days. It's going to be awesome. We play Columbine, too, so that's going to oh, be yeah? cool. Well, good. Yeah. Good luck. So, thank you. Appreciate I it. I will talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks, Sister Callan. All right, Dylan. Bye-bye.